Now in our final step of lecture 17, which is we now have an image, we know where the foreground and the background is, and we've applied connected components, so we've identified where the objects, how many objects there are. Now what we'd like to do is be able to select each of these objects independently and figure some statistics about them. In particular, we'd like to know where is the center of mass of the object, and then what is the best um, a uh, way to reach in and grab. What orientation should I orient my robot gripper so that it's easiest to pick up this object? To do this, we need to calculate the centroid and the moment. And so an image of this here are five different models. And the black dot at the center of each of these boxes is the center of mass of the, the pixel image. And the black line shows the dominant axis. Um, which is defined by the second moment of these objects, and that tells us you know, where's, what's the best orientation to reach in and grab these objects. All right, in order to solve this, we need a few, uh, some mathematical machinery. In particular, we need something called an indicator function. Indicator function is given by capital script I, subscript uh, lowercase i. Uh, it's a function of R and C. Um, and so it returns a 1 if this pixel RC is contained in component I. And otherwise, it's just going to give a 0. And so what the indicator does, you apply this to an image, and it'll only light up the ith component. Everything else will be hidden. And so it's a, it's a handy tool. I use it in a, a number of our papers. Um, the next concept that we need is the moment. And the moment is a mathematical operation on the image where we talk about the moment subscript ij of, of uh, component k. And so we use our indicator function to only highlight component k. And we multiply, we take the power of the row column to the ith power and the column to the jth power. And these tell us some characteristics of the image. Turns out if you have all the moments from i equals 0 to infinity and j equals 0 to infinity, it's enough to reconstruct the object. Uh, well, that's a lot of data. Um, but there are some low order moments that are actually very useful. And so one of the most useful ones is the zeroth order one. And so that's going to take r to the 0, which so will be 1 for everything, and c to the 0. And so all you're doing is you're summing up how many uh, variables are inside uh, component k. It's just the number of pixels in the object. This tells us what is the mass of the object, or equivalently, what is the area of the object. Now, when we talk about moments, we often talk about the order of the moment. The concept's easy to understand. It's just the summation of i plus j. Um, so, low order ones will tell us, uh, you know, the zeroth order one tells us the number of pixels. Uh, and other ones that are very useful are the first or mo order moments. And so that's I set either the i or the j to 1 and set the other one to 0. And so if I set m10, I'm just multiplying my row component times each of these. And this tells you, you know, what is the average, uh, the average row value in my component. If I do the other one, I can find the average column component of my component. And so M10 and M01 together tell you where is the centroid, the center of mass of your object. Now we can say, and yeah, a picture is often kind of nice. I like this web page. Um, it shows a few different ways to think about these moments. Uh, just remember, the zeroth moment is the um, is the, how big is the object. The first moment is the, the center of mass of the object, and the second moments tell you, you know, what is this axis of orientation. So we're going to split those out. But the centroid, this is a very important concept. Uh, you can think about it, it's a, uh, the centroid is the center of mass. So if I took the entire mass of my entire image and I concentrated it at a single point, um, uh, and then I just replaced uh, this value, r bar, where I've concentrated the mass, if I replaced that variable r with just this constant value, well then my first moment would not change. And so now I can then solve and figure out, well what is this r bar value that gives me my solution? 
and I do that just by dividing through. I can, since this R bar is a constant, I can pull it outside here, and then I can divide both sides by what's left. And so I have uh, my summation of R times my indicator function divided by my zeroth order. So this is my first order moment divided by my zeroth order moment. That gives you, so this is the mass of the object divided by the average row, the average weighted row, and that tells you, you know, where is the center, the center row, and then we can get the center column in the same way. And so these are just functions, the centroids are just functions of uh, my first and zeroth order uh, moments. Now, um, as we go into higher order moments, uh, they, they're really weighted by where is the, the centroid of my object. And so it's often very useful to compute the moments um, with respect to the center of mass of the object. And the reason we do that is now we get a quantity that doesn't change if I translate the object. So we say the result is invariant to translations of the, the object. So these central moments are nice because if I figure out you know, what are the moments of, oh, say a pen, uh, and then I move that pen around in the image, well, those moments are all going to be the same. Um, I'm still, it's going to still have the same area, um, and its uh, higher order moments will be the same. Uh, it's just translated around. And so how we define that is uh, all we do is we take uh, whatever the row value is, and we subtract off the center, the, the average value. And then we take that quantity to the i and do the same for our columns, raise that to the j. And then we get these central moments. We're going to show these with a capital C underscore ij. And again, these r bar k and c bar k, those are the centroids of the kth object. And so it's subscript k because maybe we've got you know, 15 different blocks, and we want to figure out these centroid, central moments for each of these individual blocks. All right, so now we need to talk about the object orientation. And it's easy to think about this as just, this is just the axis that passes through the object that minimizes the second moment. So the second moment is that distance squared. And so what I'd like you to do is draw the orientation for these two objects. It's just going to be a line through the longest axis. Um, so here are these central, these are second moment lines through these two objects. So the central moment is defined as this quantity L. Um, and um, we, it's uh, the se second moment, you know, it's a, a squared relationship of our RSC times our indicator function. Where this D is our distance metric, right? So it's the minimum distance from the pixel that's at location RC to the line, which is our second moment. And for a second moment, uh, we want to minimize this quantity L. Uh, that'll tell us our, our dominant axis. So we want to minimize this L with respect to all possible lines that exist. Now, in geometry, you learned a lot of different ways to define a line. And you probably started with y equals mx plus b. And there are some, you know, that's a, a nice way to learn uh, the geometry of a line, but it has some problems. Uh, so y equals mx plus b, the m is the slope of the object, and the b is the y-intercept. And the problem is this m is undefined if you have infinite slope. Um, because it's a divide by zero error. And so we'd like a parameterization that doesn't have this divide by zero error. And so one nice one to use is the row theta parameterization, which is uh, the, the line is the locus of all x, y points that satisfy this equation of x times the cosine of theta plus y times the sine of theta minus rho equals zero. And so here's a picture, and I'll show you a video later, but the first thing, um, is you know, so this is this line this purple line here is totally defined um, by the distance from the origin rho and then the angle theta and this purple dot is just going to be rho times cosine theta uh, sine theta and then uh, this line is the locus of all x y points that satisfy this equation here is a beautiful 
video that I made just for you guys. And so you can see as they vary the row between uh, zero and infinity, where it changed the distance from our origin. And then by moving this uh, theta value, we can change its orientation. But we can specify any possible line in the plane with these two parameters. So now we've got a parameterization of a line that we argue is better than that y equals mx plus b. What do we do with it? Well, uh, we can go and redefine our moment calculations. And so the distance of any uh, row column pixel of this line is this distance vector is just going to be r times the cosine theta plus c sine theta minus our row. So if you're on that line, uh, then your distance will be zero. Anything else is going to be greater than zero. And so what we want to minimize is we want to minimize over all possible row thetas this quantity, this d squared quantity, which is going to be you know, this distance squared times our indicator function. And now, anytime you want to find the minimum um, with respect to some variables, the trick is to first take the, the first derivative uh, and then set it to zero. And so you know, what we're trying to do is we've got a bunch of these row column that I've shown in orange. We want to find what is the line, what is the theta and the row values that minimizes the squared distance that's summed over all possible, uh, over all uh, pixels that are in my image. I want to find this line that minimizes that. And so we can pick either row or theta to solve first. Turns out the row is easier, so we're going to solve that first. So let's solve for the, the row that minimizes that. We take the first derivative. Um, so this is the same equation that we had before. And we can take the first derivative with respect to row. And so we'll apply our, you know, we'll factor our derivative through here. Uh, and then we'll apply our chain rule because we've got this u squared term here. And so we'll take 2 times u du. Uh, and so the derivative with respect to rho is just going to be negative 1 times 2. So negative 2 times um, what was in this quantity. Uh, now we can uh, fa you know, distribute our summation. We've got three different terms that are inside this parentheses. Uh, 2r times the cosine of theta, 2 c minus 2c times the sine of theta. Uh, plus 2 rho times the indicator, and they're all times the indicator function. Now we can pull all the constants out. So the constants are our cos terms and our sine terms, are just functions of theta and a rho term. Uh, and then we've got a bunch of functions here. This is r times the indicator function, while this is our centroid, uh, our, our, our m010 and our m01, and this is our m00. So we can redefine that. Um, We've got our average value here, um, our average the centroid. Um, and so you notice we've got a 2 and an m0,0 in all these terms. So we can collect those together. And we get an r cosine theta plus c sine theta minus rho. And now we set it to 0. And so it doesn't matter how many pixels we have. We just have 0 equals r bar cos theta plus c bar sine theta minus rho. Um, and uh, we, you know, we set this to zero. And um, you know, so you know, this is zero. So the line that minimizes this is just a line that passes through this r bar plus c bar. Because at that point, um, uh, then we're going to equal zero uh, everywhere along there. So the solution is that you want your line to move through the centroid of the object, which is rather obvious in retrospect. So the line, ha your our, our orientation line uh, that minimizes the second moment is going to go right through uh, the center of our object. So now we want to figure out well, what's the orientation of this line. And so we already know that this line has to go through the center of the object. So it makes sense to define a new uh, coordinate system where our, we call it r prime, where r prime is just going to be r minus our, our centroid, uh, and c prime is going to be just our, c, our column values minus the centroid. And the reason we do this, we're just translating our object to be centered at 0, 0. And so we can redefine our line is now it has a row of 0. You know, there's no offset for there. All we have to figure out is what is this orientation theta. 
And so our, our L function that we want to minimize in terms of R prime is very simple. There's no row in there. Uh, and we want to find the derivative, the first derivative with respect to theta, and then set that to zero. Um, and so, again, we can just uh, factor this through um, using the chain rule. And so we can, um, you know, the derivative of this is 2 times u du. Uh, we can factor that through by applying our summation to each of these terms. And it's a little bit messy, um, but we can pull out all of our constants. Our constants are these state of, uh, you know, our, our trigonometric functions. And then we're going to leave behind some r prime, c prime values times our indicators, which means that these are going to be uh, moment calculations. And so this is the same term that I had before, but in terms of these central moments, uh, this first term is 2 times, this is r1, c1, so this is c11 times our cosine squared theta. Um, and then we've got uh, two terms here that have the cosines assigned. So it'll be our C02 um, minus our C20. And then we've got our minus C11 because we've got our R1C1. So now I can collect my C11s together. And I'll have cosine squared minus sine squared. Um, and then we have our CO2 minus C20. Now the book says, hey, use your double angle identities and you can get a little bit more simplification. So I'm just applying these double angle identities. The difference of cosine squared minus sine squared is cos 2 theta, um, whereas the cosine times sine theta is going to be 1 half sine 2 theta. We set this equation equal to 0, and then we want to solve it for theta. And so uh, we get our terms here. C11 times cos 2 theta times uh, 1 half of CO2 minus C20 sine 2 theta. Well, we're going to put our, our theta values on one side. We get sine divided by cosine. Uh, they're both of 2 theta. Uh, we get a simple term that's just in terms of our central moments. Well, sine of 2 theta divided by cos of 2 theta is just the tangent of 2 theta. And so we get our, now our definition that's only in terms of our centroids. We just take the uh, one half of the arc tangent of this, and we get our, our orientation line. And that concludes how to find the orientation. And so what I'd like you to do next is go into your in-class worksheet and practice this out. You've got four different objects here. I want you to calculate their centroids and then calculate their orientations. So you're going to have to calculate um, uh, their zeroth order moments, uh, their first um, moments, and their central moments. All right. Happy math. Take care.